with First Day Realty, and I'm here to, to introduce you to uh, my favorite school, I think is the best school in the neighborhood, uh, Blessed Sacrament Elementary, or as we also know it, they call Saint Sacrament. It's a French immersion elementary school located not too far from my area, False Creek. Uh, it's just up the street from Broadway's uh, SkyTrain City, uh, SkyTrain Station, located at Camby Street. So I'm here to talk with Madame McKite, the principal of our school, uh, principal of our school, about all the great things that make uh, Bless Sacrament a great school to attend. So, welcome, Madame. Hello, thank you, Elena, for having me. Yeah, it's a it's such a pleasure because um, I think more it's kind of a this school is kind of a hidden gem, and I think that um, this interview is a perfect opportunity to shine a spotlight on it and basically share with more families what a great school we have and hopefully encourage uh, more families to join us. So, exactly, we, we want to open our doors and welcome more families and we're happy, I'm always happy to speak about our schools. So thank you for giving us this opportunity. Perfect. So just to give you a little bit of the basics about the school. So once again, the school is Blessed Sacrament Elementary. The physical address is 3020 Heather Street in Vancouver. Uh, it's just at the corner of Heather and 14th. It's in that, like, as I mentioned, it's in the Canby Street area, close to the City Hall and General Hospital. So we have a lot of families from, from those two places um, in the school. The business phone number is 604. 8767211 and the school website is ecole saint sacrament saint sacrament.ca so um just in a few words um this uh let's kind of describe what um what the school is how big it is and um let's go from there great so we are a catholic french immersion school in vancouver um, and like you said, uh, the area we are in surrounds us with the uh, other hospitals and uh, very, very central in Vancouver. We are a kindergarten to grade seven school, maternelle à septième année, and we have about 200 students, about 143 families or so. And uh, um, we love working with the community that is around us. Um, we are attached to a parish. It's called the Blessed Sacrament Parish, Paroisse Saint Sacrement. And it's nice to have that proximity with a church nearby. Um, a lot of families come to us that may speak French, but don't have to, um, that are interested in offering their children a second language as a opportunity to learn in French and um, hopefully become bilingual. And uh, it opens up a lot of doors for many children, but what's really neat for us is that we are a community here together. Parents don't have to know French to send their um, kids to our school. The kids learn French at school and uh, anything that they have to work on at home is manageable by the students um, and the parents can support their children with that learning and giving them that extra um, support spiritually, emotionally, physically and intellectually as well. Yeah, that's one of the great things, of course, like I, my, my personal background, I, I didn't speak French at all. And I actually, I found that I'm starting to pick up a little bit of French uh, thanks to my kids. So, nice. yeah. Um, so, uh, Madame, I know that you've joined our school uh, quite recently. So I just wanted to kind of tell everyone um, a little bit about your background and how long you've been at the school. Yes, yeah, so I've been teaching with the, our school district since 2003, and I did go away to the island and come back. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been a teacher for 20 years, but mm -hmm. as a principal, this is my third year. Yeah. Um, honeymoon was short-lived because my <laughs> first year of principal, of course, we experienced COVID together. Um, yeah. But uh, I feel like our school um, has never stopped. We've always been able to provide the learning for the students. And we've just had to do things differently in this time. Uh, and I, it's been my pleasure to serve at our school at Ecole Saint Sacrement with the community that we have, with the staff, the families, the parishioners, um, and all the people around our school that have supported us. Yeah, that's one of the things I definitely have to say that I appreciated the fact that throughout COVID, throughout the entire insanity that happened over the last two years or so, my kids continued going to school. 
And even for that brief period of time when they were not physically in school, there was still a lot of support, a lot of uh, material that was available to help them continue learning while they were still at home. So that was much appreciated. That's, so uh, that's really thanks to the effort of all the staff that yeah. uh, stepped up to the plate during that difficult time because it's really important for them. Like they really deeply care about their students yeah. and uh, their mental health as well, like their well being. It's not just about educating the child, it's forming a well rounded student. Uh, and they care so deeply that they wanted to stay connected to their students. Yeah, I mean, like Emma was uh, still like, I can't remember two years ago, she was in grade one, and she was still struggling with some um, reading, you know, especially in French. And so I was really appreciative that her teacher at that time actually arranged, arranged extra tutoring sessions over Zoom to help her learn how to read. So that was really, really appreciated. And so, of course, that brings us naturally to the next question. Um, what do you find families love most about the school? I definitely think that they love that it's a close-knit community that is at the heart of our uh, school. Uh, everybody knows everyone and, you know, they can rely on each other. They can contact each other for play dates and just, um, you know, if you forget something or what's going on, they can touch base with one another easily. Um, yeah. Definitely also that it is a very unique school in that it's French immersion. And it mm -hmm. is only French immersion, so we're not a dual stream. We we can do the all French, um, and uh, it is a faith-based institution. We have specialists in our school, so our school has its own librarian, PE teacher, uh, music teacher, so and learning support, of course. Um, each class has a educational assistant. So that gives a lot of extra academic support for the children, um, those that need the extra support in class. We are, they have someone there for them that can help them and support them in their learning journey. Um, we have extra programs available for the, uh, for the children and their families. So after school and before school, we have a before and after school program. So for families that need that service, it's available for them. And uh, we have clubs, probably more during non-COVID time, but even during COVID time, we've been very creative at having um, the young global citizens doing interviews on Zoom. We have math clubs. We have an, we've been very creative at keeping the kids engaged during this difficult time. And a lot of parents would say that they even like our parents' night that we offer because um, our parents' nights are very relevant to parents and the experiences as a family that they are um, that they are experiencing right now, be it uh, um, social media, uh, discussions on health and develop developmental growth. Yeah, and those are pointers that we help them in finding the best the best resources. We use really. Um, well-trained staff in those areas and then the, they are able to share it with the families and help guide their discussions by giving them points about how to talk about these topics at home. How do you engage with the child about health and developmental growth? These are very mm -hmm. important for them. Yeah, puberty is hard to discuss, yeah. And I appreciate that you guys get, like gave us an early jump start on it, right? So we went over this in grade four and five, like way in advance of actually hitting puberty, so. That's right, and it's very age appropriate too. The way it yeah. is uh, a building block makes it age appropriate for the child and allows you to feel comfortable to speak about it because that's when you feel well prepared as a parent. And for us as educators, we are working as a team with the families, um, with the parents. Uh, we recognize that parents are the first educators of their child and uh, we're there to facilitate and support whichever way that we can do that. Um, and so I think that's some of the things that the parents appreciate the most and definitely the feel that they belong to a greater community is key. Right. Um, I, it's like I, you've covered like all the all the points that I said that I liked. And I said that, how can I say maybe one point that I would just like to elaborate on more uh, for new families that are coming in. I think it's it's definitely a different experience. I feel like my kids being part of ESS, they have become not not only smarter academically, but I think they have become better people, you know, kinder people and more connected to their community. 
which is, I think, is the best I could hope for. It's the best outcome I could hope for, because of course, all of us um, want our kids to grow up to be smart and successful and do well in their careers. But I think it's so much more important to actually raise positive, good human beings that want to make a positive change in this world. So um, I see that happening with ESS, with the Young Global Citizens Program that Evan was very lucky to participate in. And again, um, you know, so many opportunities to, to give to the church, to, uh, to the greater community, right? So many different drives and opportunities for families and for students to participate in and just um, learn more about the world that they live in and how they can make a difference. Right. So, and you know, the, it's not going to always be perfect, right? No child is perfect in that sense, but to us, they're, they're each unique. They run in their own lanes and we recognize that, especially now, nowadays, right? It's important to recognize the gift that every child brings to be part of a class, even though they're in a specific grade, they come with their own talents, challenges, learning styles. Um, and we, we recognize that in children and uh, we want to connect with every kid. I think it's really important at our school that the teachers really connect um, with their students and they get to really know them and know them by name, know their families, their siblings, um, what interests them and um, build on that for them. Yeah. And um, what is something that you wanted to share that most parents don't know about ESS? Well, aside that it's a great school and I can't yeah. stop talking about it. And I love that other families are happy to also share about their school. Um, I'd like people to know that this is uh, um, a school for the community. Like it's not, we don't keep it to ourselves. We want to share this treasure or this jewel that we have. And uh, to do so, we do have an open house every year. And this year, the open house is December 9, um, where you can learn more about entry into the school for kindergarten classes, but also for any family. Uh, we can take uh, families up to uh, grade one and two. Uh, I, although it's French, I mean, ideally is that they would have some French um, if they're coming in after grade two, but uh, um, new families don't have to have a French background. Um, and they're all welcome and they're all open, welcome to our open house where they can learn more about our school and whether it's a good fit for them. Um, yeah. and their children. There's lots of space in uh, the older grades, but in the older grades, they need to have some French. So that's for our grade four to seven. Um, mm -hmm. We are referred to as a regional school in that we cater to families, not just from, from, from Vancouver, but lots of families come to us specifically because they're looking for what we have to offer as a unique um, Catholic French immersion school. Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, you know, um, for French immersion school, we actually do have quite a bit of space in older grades. Um, and due, due to many shifts and changes uh, that happened during COVID. But one thing I was going to say, I do see also an influx of families moving from East Canada now in, to the West Coast. So for those families who already have some French in their background, maybe their kids went to another French immersion school, you know, in a different area. Um, you know, definitely welcome them to apply because um, I know how hard it is to get into a French immersion school in the public realm. So this is a great option for those who are relocating and they're looking to put their kid in, to continue their kids on that path of being bilingual. True. And I want to add that if you drive by our school, you can see on the out, like from driving by you can see our playground and our field in the front of the school what you don't see is that we also have a courtyard in the back of the school which offers more space for the children to play in and that's pretty special for being a school in Vancouver to have that space available for children to play in and a variety of styles of space that is outdoor education so we have the field the playground, the courtyard, and in our courtyard, we have made our own track for kids to practice their running. And we have um, eight garden beds, one of which is a sand bed. So the kids learn about growing their own fruits and vegetables and wildflowers and local plants, uh, native plants to this area. 
Uh, and we are just in the midst of building a long jump as well, a long jump, a long jump box. Okay, <laughs> so, cool. So it's being built. It's being built uh, in our courtyard. We're using every space. We're maximizing in every space that we have in the school, and this way, students will be able to practice for track and field right on site. Perfect. And um, what direction, final question, what direction would you like to the school to grow in? Where do you see yourself in five years down the road, for example, for instance? Well, we're really de dedicating a lot of time um, and training to learn more about First Nations people. Uh, we find that it's really important for our children to understand um, that truth and reconciliation is important and it is um, needed. Uh, we're teaching them uh, empathy and compassion and understanding. Uh, when it comes to uh, learning about the different peoples of, our, of this land, and um, we want to share that with them. I think it's a learning journey, but it starts with listening. And so we're all listening right now. We're all learning and listening because it's so important in order to reach truth and um, peace amongst all the people living in our town, in our region. Um, and to reconcile uh, past, present, and the future generations as well. I think it's important for them to be able to share that truth with their children. So we're spending time learning and training in that area, training our staff and um, passing that knowledge on to our children. We feel called to do so as educators. That's mm -hmm. our duty. Um, we are growing our programs always for numeracy, literacy, and in the sciences, making it more locally based, um, First Nation, using the principles of First Nations for learning. Um, and uh, we definitely always want our school and our children to feel safe. And in order to do that, we are looking at seismically upgrading our school. And that is a project that we're hoping will be in the near future. And, uh, you know, it may be a bigger project, but for now, we are focusing on what steps to take to make that plan happen and uh, able to share that with our community. Our community will be part of the decision as we get nearer to um, reaching a time when we have to decide what is the next step. Right. And uh, once again, yeah, thanks for reminder about the open house on December 9th. Um, but where can people find out more how to get in contact with you and how to uh, apply for the school? Yeah, so our website, ecolesensacramont.ca, is uh, very encompassing of all that information. You have all of our registration forms, our uh, information about the open house. It even gives you an idea of the spirit of our school because we often post events that are happening and it really lets you in on what is going on at school. Um, so under the contact, app, con contact us um, tab on our website, you can find a lot of information there. But I invite you to explore our website because that's where you will find the most information and you're always um, welcome to also contact me directly or our office, and uh, we would be happy to help you with any questions or needs you may have. Perfect. Well, once again, Reina, thank you so much for your time. I'm really excited to, uh, to see more new families join our school, and hopefully more will reach out to, to register for the open house. So once again, thank you. Uh, this thank is Elena you. with First Day Realty, and if you're interested in uh, get, Learning more about the Canby Street area and Falls Creek community, visit Park Bench uh, backslash Falls Creek. And, um, you know, here you will see more blogs and more posts from, from me and um, also on my YouTube channel. So great. You'll, you'll also find us on social media. So um, yeah, can... I'll be sure to post those at the end of the video so people great. can find you on, you know, Facebook, Instagram and um, your school website. Yeah, please follow us and then you'll be in on all the exciting events happening regularly at the school. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Elena. Take care. Bye. Au revoir.